Chapter 13 After dinner turned till the beginning of the evening, Kitty was feeling a sensation aching to the sensation of a young man before a battle. Her heart throbbed violently and her thoughts would not rest on anything. She felt that this evening, when they would both meet for the first time, would be a turning point in her life. And she was continually picturing them to herself, at one moment each separately and then both together. When she mused on the past, she dwelt with pleasure, with tenderness, on the memories of her relations with Levin. The memories of childhood and of Levin's friendship with her dead brother gave a special poetic charm to her relations with him. His love for her, of which she felt certain, was flattering and delightful to her, and it was pleasant for her to think of Levin. In her memories of Vronsky there always entered a certain element of awkwardness, though he was in the highest degree well-bred and at ease, as though there were some false note. Not that Vronsky, he was very simple and nice, but in herself. While with Levin she felt perfectly simple and clear. But on the other hand, directly she thought of the future with Vronsky, there arose before her a perspective of brilliant happiness. With Levin the future seemed misty. When she went upstairs to dress and looked into the looking glass, she noticed with joy that it was one of her good days and that she was in complete possession of all her forces. She needed this so far what lay before her. She was conscious of external composure and free grace in her movements. At half past seven she had only just gone down into the drawing room when the footman announced Konstantin Levin. The princess was still in her room and the prince had not come in. So it is to be, thought Kitty, and all the blood seemed to rush to her heart. She was horrified at her paleness as she glanced into the looking glass. At that moment she knew beyond doubt that he had come early on purpose to find her alone and to make her an offer. And only then, for the first time, the whole thing presented itself in a new, different aspect. Only then she realized that the question did not affect her only, with whom she would be happy and whom she loved, but that she would have that moment to wound a man whom she liked and to wound him cruelly. What for? Because he, dear fellow, loved her, was in love with her, but there was no help for it, so it must be, so it would have to be. My God, shall I myself really have to say it to him? She thought. Can I tell him I don't love him? That will be a lie. What am I to say to him? That I love someone else? That's impossible. I'm going away. She had reached the door when she heard his step. Now it's not honest. What have I to be afraid of? I've done nothing wrong. What is to be, will be. I will tell the truth. And with him one can be ill at ease. Here he is, she said to herself, seeing his powerful, shy figure with his shining eyes fixed on her. She looked straight into his face as though imploring him to spare her and gave her a hand. It's not time yet. I think I'm too early, he said, glancing round to the empty drawing room. When he saw that his expectations were realized, that there was nothing to prevent him from speaking, his face became gloomy. Oh no, said Kitty and sat down at the table. But this was just what I wanted, to find you alone, he began, not sitting down and not looking at her so as not to lose courage. Mama will be down directly, she was very much tired yesterday. She talked on, not knowing what her lips were uttering and not taking her supplicating and caressing eyes of him. He glanced at her, she blushed and ceased speaking. I told you I didn't know whether I should be here long, that it depended on you. She dropped her head lower and lower, not knowing herself what answer she should make to what was coming. That it depended on you, he repeated. I meant to say that I, I came for this, to, to be my wife, he brought out, not knowing what he was saying, but feeling that the most terrible thing was said, he stopped short and looked at her. She was breathing heavily, not looking at him. She was feeling ecstasy. Her soul was flooded with happiness. She had never anticipated that the utterance of love 
would produce such a powerful effect on her. But it lasted only an instant. She remembered Vronsky, she lifted her clear truthful eyes, and seeing his desperate face, she answered hastily, that cannot be, forgive me. A moment ago, and how close she had been to him, of what importance in his life, and how aloof and remote from him she had become now. It was bound to be so, he said, not looking at her. He bowed and was meaning to retreat. 